What's up, everyone? Wade Fellon with Big Hole Lodge in Wise River, Montana. Dad and I are actually headed out today in search of some dry fly action. And I might check the streamer bite. We're heading up to the Big Hole. Before we launch, I need to run into Fish, Wildlife, and Parks to hear firsthand what are the new rules affecting the Big Hole River. Rumor has it I need to go and cut one hook off of all my articulated streamers, and I'm not 100% sure which section of the Big Hole River they closed to protect spawning brown trout last fall, nor for which date range. Is it open now, or do I have to wait till May 31st? So let's go check it out. that were just enacted on the big hole and the beaver head. And I want to make them clear to you. And rather than speculate, let's go in here and talk with Shane Yaskis, Region 3 Warden. Uh, you'll see him out on the big hole and the beaver head and find out what, what these guys are enforcing and what they're not enforcing. Hello, Officer Hi, Yaskis. Thank you for meeting with me today. Yeah, no, my pleasure. I'm glad to talk about the regs anytime. Last year, the Fish Wildlife Commission in Montana enacted new rules with the intent of protecting brown trout in both the Beaverhead and the Big Hole River. So the big ones that we hear about are the two hook issue on streamers, uh, treble hooks. I was under the impression you had to cut one of those hooks off and just have one hook on that uh, lure, if you will. So we'll start with that question. Yeah, no, that's a good question. People wondered, because it said single hooks initially, could you use um, a hook, uh, like a Rapala or an articulated streamer that had two hooks? Uh, well, the answer is that you can use a lure um, that has two hooks, uh, but they both have to be single pointed hooks. The wording from the reg says lures or multiple hook attachments may still be used, but any treble hook must be replaced by a single hook. If you cut off the two extra hooks on a treble hook, that also meets the requirement for two single hooks on a lure. And we would ask that we pinch the barbs on all hooks. I do appreciate guys that pinch the barbs and, or file them off. And the other thing that we, we should talk about are the brown trout are catch and release on the Big Hole River throughout the length of the entire river below Dickey Bridge now. So we also hear a bit about river closures. What is the new closure? Well, in general, rivers in Region 3 are open all year, unless specifically stated in the regulations. On the Big Hole River, the only closure where you cannot cast a line is in the section from BLM Maiden Rock Fishing Access Site down to Browns Bridge. It's open April 1st to September 30th, so it would close October 1st. You guys have been asking me a few times this year, is it, is it BLM Maiden Rock Bridge? But no, it's the fishing access site. So. so from the top of the Maiden Rock Canyon, when you come over the bridge, there's an outhouse and a boat ramp. From there, all the way down to Browns Bridge, on the other side of Melrose, is now closed from September 30... Yeah, it opens April 1st, and it's open on September 30th, so, so it's closed October 1st. Okay. However, above BLM Maiden Rock and below Browns Bridge, it's still catching a release for rainbow trout until the third Saturday in May. So uh, guys are gonna have to keep that in mind too, that there is two kind of separate dates there for opening. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta read the regs before you go. You know, the days of just buying a license and going. And yeah. You gotta know now. Wardens wanna, we want you to have a good time out there. We don't want you to mess up. So <laughs> <laughs> glad we can talk about this stuff. How about bait fishing? You know, that, that's a big change this year, honestly. Um, artificial lures only from uh, Dickey Bridge all the way down to the Jefferson River. You used to be able to use bait such as earthworms and things uh, below salmon fly fishing access site and now you can't. Uh, the other big change is it used to say artificial lures only and or maggots only and they've taken maggots completely out of the regulations. So what laws have I not brought to your attention today that you would like to bring to our attention. The Aquatic Invasive Species Prevention Pass. Well, owned three times by, fast. <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta come up with a better acronym. Boats that are owned by non-residents that are brought in from out of state to float them on Montana waters, you have to buy a $10 Aquatic Invasive Species Prevention Pass for non-resident boats. Even though you have one on your fishing regulations when you buy your fishing license, 
This is in addition to that. $30 for a motorized boat and $10 for a non-motorized boat. And so when we check your fishing license and you have, say, three non-residents in the boat and you're all from another state, and then uh, we'll check your fishing license and ask for your Aquatic Invasive Species Prevention Pass for your boat. If, it, if the boat is owned by a non-resident, yeah, they would need that pass. Uh, it's something new, so guys just don't think about it. The other thing that we check a lot is just life preservers in your boat. Mm -hmm. And we check your fishing licenses, and then we always check your life preservers. And sometimes it seems a little cruel that we'll write you a ticket for being one or two short, but it's a safety issue. And we want guys that just not float unless they have a life preserver for everyone in the boat. And kids under 12 have to have them on while the boat's in the ocean. Yeah. How about a throw rope? Is that a requirement or just a good idea in high water? It's a good idea. Yeah, they are. They do come in handy. I was able to actually, myself and Regan Dean, we pulled a boat off a rock with a throw rope and they were stuck out there with kids and the raft was just pressurized onto the rock. The only way we could have gotten them off was with that throw rope we happened to have. It was a dangerous situation. So we recommend pinching your barbs and cutting all but one hook off, and we recommend a throw rope in the boat, especially during high water. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Really appreciate it. We'll see you out on the river. Yeah, don't get in trouble. I don't like getting people in trouble. <laughs> I like them to be legal. So. I'm really glad we stopped in there. Articulated streamers are still okay. I strongly recommend for the sake of the fish and for lack of further regulation down the line, everybody pinch those barbs. I'm going to pinch all the barbs and our, our flies coming out of the shop this year. All the streamers, I'm still going to cut hooks off those big articulated streamers. I don't know whether it'll be the back hook or the front hook, but we'll do another video about, uh, we'll talk to fly tires and, and streamer fishermen. A friend of ours always ties articulated streamers with just one hook and he's got some science behind why he chose the front hook. Bigger fish attack the head of the fly, he feels. Please pick up a book of regs because I guarantee these rules are going to continue to change. So each year I will do my best to keep you apprised of any rule changes. We'll do another one of these videos if something that uh, we just clarified ends up becoming unclear again. Take care. Thanks.